Hello, welcome back to another episode of Northwest Backyard Barbecue. My name is Tim, and today we're gonna to be trying something for the first time for me, and that's gonna be a sous vide pork baby back rib. Uh, so a uh, sous vide machine is in a, a, a basically an immersion device, and they also sell big ones, commercial ones, but it's uh, basically hot water that circulates around uh, your food uh, to get it to the temperature that uh, of doneness that, that you like. And then from there, you can finish um, off your food on grills, on uh, in stove, uh, or on in pans on the stove top. Uh, you can do it on your smoker, uh, as far as just browning the meat uh, to get that caramelization on the outside of it. And you can do vegetables and potatoes and, and all kinds of different things in there. But today, we're going to be doing um, these pork ribs. And I'll show you that sous vide machine uh, when I stick the ribs into it. And then from there, uh, once those are done, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, put them on the grill and uh, get them nice and um, caramelized on the outside. So um, now what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be trying a couple different times. So I'm gonna try doing these ribs at six hours, seven hours, and eight hours to test the doneness. Since I've never done this recipe before, we're gonna see what's better, um, six hours, seven hours, or eight hours. Uh, and we're gonna get started with um, our, our rubs and we're gonna put those on right now. So let me show you what that is. So what we're gonna do, is I've got some mustard here and what I started with and I've already done a few racks um, and I'm going to go ahead and do one for you here so you can see kind of what we're doing but um, I've got I started with a cup of mustard and also I did uh, four tablespoons of liquid smoke since we're not going to be putting these on the smoker we're going to have to try to impart some smoke into them because they're only going to be on the grill uh, browning uh, for you know maybe uh, five to ten minutes uh, and obviously that's not enough time to get any smoke in there plus it's gonna be at a high heat so you're not gonna get a lot of smoke anyway so we have to put some liquid smoke in there so we're, I'm using Stubbs liquid smoke today this is a hickory smoke um, and again with that cup of um, mustard so I'm gonna take the mustard and we're gonna slab it onto these ribs I'm gonna do it pretty generous because this is gonna act obviously as a carrier for that smoke flavor as well as a binder for our rub and if you've never used a sous vide machine before uh, they are absolutely fantastic uh, you basically well people say you can't overcook your meat when you put them in there you overcook your food which isn't necessarily true um, you'll never get it above the temperature that you set it at uh, so that part is true however over time the meat will start to break down in various ways or whatever food you're cooking if you leave it in too long and it will change the texture of the food but it is a lot obviously a lot more forgiving than say just a normal uh, putting a steak on a grill for instance and getting it to 129 degrees or 130 degrees medium rare um, with this I and mean, with that you have to leave it on until you get there you have to uh, probe it thermometer and make sure that the temperature is right you're going to have hot spots on your grill that type of thing with the sous vide you leave it in there if it takes an hour or an hour and a half before the steak is actually at the temperature you want if you leave it in there another hour hour and a half it's going to be basically the same now if you start going over four hours five hours six hours long that's when uh, it's going to start changing that texture of the meat so you don't necessarily want to do that so you can overdo it to where um, the meat isn't as appetizing but if you overshoot it by as much as an hour and a half or two hours you're totally fine uh, with a piece of meat um, so it's very nice you don't have to there's no guesswork in there at all so I want to try it with the ribs and we're going to see how that is so we've got the mustard on there now we're going to put on uh, some Everglades seasoning which I've talked to you about this before I'll put a link to this in the description again so you can see that this isn't the container it comes in I use these stainless steel containers um, and then I'm using some simmer and docks uh, rub as well that we're going to put on there and again this isn't the container that it comes in uh, but it's just, I'll put a link to this uh, simmer and docks rub uh, as well this is great rub for for pork and we're going to try that out today and we're seasoning all the ribs so I got three racks of ribs to do the six seven and eight hours and um, we're going to do them all exactly the same same rub and the main in this uh, mustard with the smoke in it I have removed the membrane from the backs of these already so we get the seasoning to penetrate the back side as well all right and I'm going to be vacuum sealing and I'm going to show you here in a minute what what I've already done with one rack but I'm going to vacuum seal these ribs. You don't have a vacuum sealer. And actually, I have a chamber sealer and a vacuum sealer. I've used the chamber sealer to do these. 
And if you don't have a chamber sealer, uh, you can um, use a regular Ziploc bag. You just want to make sure all the air is pressed out of the bag if you have a sous vide machine so that the food doesn't float. If all the air is uh, pushed out, generally the food will stay underneath the water, submerged in the water. Um, so now, sorry about the glare here. It's early in the morning because I got to get these on. So they're done for, uh, you know, 10 o'clock at night. So that's why this glare is on here. So I apologize for that. Hopefully you can see this okay. And it's pretty chilly out here today. Oregon fall weather. However, it is sunny. It's supposed to be a nice day today in the 70s. Uh, not too bad for October. And here we go here. Okay, so I think we've got enough rub on there. Perfect. So now, here is the bag we're going to put it in right here. Okay. And that up. Now I'm going to try to my best to get it in here without getting it on the edge because we do want to make sure we create a seal. If it does get on the edge, we're just going to have to wipe it off. Uh, that one went pretty good. I got a little bit on there. Second one in there. Put them side by side. Okay, so I did get some on there. I'm going to have to wipe that off. But let me show you what it will look like when I get done vacuum sealing it. So this is what it, this is one of the racks I just did a few minutes ago. So this is what we're gonna do to this one as well. And I've got another one I'm gonna do uh, as well. So I'm gonna get done sealing this. I'm gonna put it in the sous vide machine. I'm gonna go ahead and place my camera on that sous vide machine so that you can uh, watch um, and see kind of what the sous vide machine is and what the setup is that I have there. And uh, I'll put links to everything uh, in the description. So if you're interested in purchasing one of these uh, or the rack that I use to place the ribs in or the container, I'll put all that stuff in the description. So uh, I'll be back with you when I've actually pulled all this stuff out of the sous, sous vide machine. But for now, enjoy watching me put them in there and set the timer and get these things cooking. We'll see you in a bit.
Okay, we're back. I uh, hope you enjoyed watching those cook in the immersion uh, sous vide. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is go ahead and uh, try these out. So again, we got a six hour, a seven hour, and an eight hour rib, and we're gonna put it on the Kamado Big Joe. Gonna grill them off a little bit, get some uh, caramelization on those, and then put some sauce on them. So let me show you what they look like uh, out of the, um, uh, the wrap that we put them in, that we cooked them in in the sous vide. So if you look down here, so this is the six hour uh, slab. This is the seven hour slab, and this is the eight hour slab. So obviously you can see the difference in color. Uh, I'm thinking that probably um, it's gonna be the seven or eight just by looks. And obviously none of these look ap um, very appetizing, but that's what sous vide does. And obviously you are supposed to grill them off uh, to get that caramelization on there because you're not gonna get that in a water bath. So that's what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna go ahead and take these over to the Kamado. I'm gonna put the camera on there so you can kind of see what we're doing, uh, but it's gonna be, um, this one will be towards the front of the Kamado, in the middle, and then towards the back. So six on the front, seven in the middle, eight on the back. And I'll grill them off, and then I'll put them in direct and let the, uh, put the sauce on, let them sit there for a little bit, let that sauce set up, and then we'll be back over here to give it a taste. So here we go. Okay, we're back and I uh, pulled them off the Kamado. So you saw what I was doing there. I kept flipping them around, just kind of brown at both sides. And then once I got done doing that, I moved them over to the indirect side and I went ahead and put on the barbecue sauce, which is um, barbecue sauce. And I let that sit in there for about another uh, seven or eight minutes or so just to set up the sauce. Uh, and now we're gonna go ahead and give it a taste. So we've got them in the same order as we had them before. So if you look down here, this is gonna be the um, one that was in the um, cooker for six hours. This one was in for seven hours, and this one was in for eight hours. So let's give it a shot, see what happens. Obviously we don't have as much pullback on this one. There is a little bit there, uh, but let's go ahead and just slice. I should probably do it like this so we can see what we're doing here. And so go ahead and cut it right down the center. Ooh, that's warm. Okay. Pretty juicy. Oh yeah, there's a lot of juice in there. Okay, I'll cut off one of these ribs and give it a try. Okay, here we go. There's that rib there. Let's see. Definitely juice in there. Let's see how it tastes. Here we go. Hmm. 
Mm. That is good. Pretty good bite. Mm. That's good, but I think that it could have used a little more time. But let's see what the next one is. Here's the seven hour. Still very juicy. these off. Give this one a try. All right. Still very juicy as you can see there. Perfect. Let's give it a try. Mm. That one is much better. More of that connective tissue and fat is rendered away on this one, making it a little bit more juicy. That six hour definitely needs more time. So that one was better. Hopefully this one, if it's as much of a step up as that, it's gonna be great. Let's try that one. So here is the eight hour. Very juicy. All right, let's give it a try. That one blown off. That's what we got there. This one looks better, but we'll see what it tastes. Let's see. Wow. Hmm. Wow, definitely eight hours. Perfect bite, that's phenomenal. That is really good. Um, I tell you, for the ease and how easy it is to cook it in the sous vide cooker, I mean, it's not exactly like doing it the full time on the smoker. I think you're still gonna impart, impart more smoke flavor. I probably maybe could have put a little bit more of the uh, liquid smoke into that mustard sauce to make it a little more smoky, but as easy as this is, if you need to do a bunch of ribs, do them ahead of time, and then just warm them up as your company comes over, I would definitely do this again. I would do it again even if I just didn't want to put them on the on the uh, smoker and kind of babysit them all day. If I wanted to put them in there and kind of forget about it and go about my day, come back when I'm ready, throw them on the grill. These are phenomenal. I, I mean, it's definitely eight hours. I mean, the seven hours are good too. Six hours, not enough time, uh, but definitely, do it the eight hours, maybe even eight and a half if you wanted to get them a little bit more fall off the bone, nine hours, they probably more fall off the bone. This is perfect. Um, and the nice thing about the sous vide is if you do it this way, eight hours, every time, they're gonna be just as done. Never gonna be more done, never gonna be less done, there's no guesswork. It's just a matter of putting it on the grill, caramelizing it up, uh, putting your barbecue sauce on, and uh, serving them up. Awesome, very good. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Northwest Backyard Barbecue. Thanks again for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified of all of our new recipes. And I look forward to seeing you next time on Northwest Backyard Barbecue. Thank you.